All right, so we've got the cowling off here and it's a nice rainy day. So the perfect day to probably deal with some of the issues that we've talked about previously. So Sonics has quite a good builder's forum and I've talked to several people and done a bunch of reading. I've gotten lots of good information on this engine. This is the Volkswagen conversion. It's an Aero V 2180, it's 80 horsepower, flat floor, air cooled. And uh, Aero V engines and all Volkswagen engines are sort of known to have some cooling issues, especially with the cylinder heads at high angles of attack. Part of it has to do with the way the air flows as it comes through the engine, it should come through your cowling and it should drop down in between these fins and uh, cool the cylinder heads and then it comes out the bottom via some sort of a chute in your cowling. You can kind of see the opening in the cowling there in the background. Well, one of the problems that these engines have is during the manufacturing process, right here in between these little fins where the engine is cast, there's sort of a seam. Well, that was filled with metal both here and on the other side and in between. And so that was actually acting as an air dam. And so one of the guys suggested that I go through and actually file all that out. And I've done that. You can see there's a bunch of uh, metal debris there that I'll have to clean up. And so we're gonna see if that does improve the airflow and help to cool things down quite a bit. One of the things that I was noticing with this engine was that when climbing uh, right out of the initial takeoff, you know, by about 500 or 600 feet, I was starting to see CHTs approaching 420, which is the maximum level that you want to go uh, for five minutes in this plane, and then you'd have to lower the nose in order to get it to cool down. And that's problematic because you really weren't getting to pattern altitude in a timely fashion. So that's one of the things we're going to try and work on. We're also going to make sure that these seals are sealed good all the way around, and uh, probably going to add some additional airflow underneath the cowling. The other thing that we're looking at is right here. Our exhaust pipes are going very, very close to the fuel lines. So if you look right here, here's your fuel line right here. And that is about a finger's breadth away from the exhaust pipe. And it runs like that for probably a good five inches. Here's your gas escalator down there. And again, also very close to the exhaust pipes. So that's heating it up. And what's happening is you get a little bit of airflow through the cowling while you're in the air. But as you hit the ground, all of a sudden that airflow goes away and things heat up very quickly. The fuel is vaporizing and causing burps and belches and outright vapor lock. So what I'm going to do is actually take this pipe and drop it down straight out the bottom of the cowling like you would see on a Skyhawk. And we've added a new k and filter. This is a K&N 1980. That's a bit of an upgrade from the original filter, which is right here. The other thing that I'm going to do is because there's absolutely no airflow in the cowling out the front, is I'm going to add a NACA duct to the front and actually bring some airflow directly in underneath the cowling at that K&N filter and also out the back. And so that should kind of cool things and allow some fresh air to come in. If you can imagine without any cow openings, it's almost like having carb heat on all the time. So you're losing a lot of hair horsepower there. Here's your cowling. It's got this little scoop out the back, which the purpose of that scoop is to allow your airflow to go through the cylinder heads down at the bottom and get sucked back out. Ideally, this should have kind of an upsloping scoop to it, which will create a negative air pressure effect. I'm going to remove this and actually uh, carbon fiber one in. It has a little more of a streamlined shape and a little more of a lip to it.